So we just, we just did a section on parabolas, now we're in ellipses. How do I know that this is going to be an ellipse and not a, or an ellipse and not a parabola? Because there's two squared. Because there's two squared, that's exactly right. So if it was just x squared and this y was not squared, this would most likely be a parabola. And likewise, if it was just a y squared, not an x squared, it would probably be a parabola opening in the other direction. So this is going to be a ellipse. What we need to do is get into the form that's on the upper right corner. So that's the regular form of the ellipse. So we have to complete the square for the x's and complete the square for the y's. So that's what we're going to do first. So let's get started with that. So I'm first going to reorder the terms. So we have 4x squared minus 8x. Put the x's first, y's second. And remember, complete the square. Maybe you need it on the quiz, for example. So here's complete the square. x squared plus bx equals x plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. So hopefully I've made you complete the square enough by now that you're familiar with completing the square. So we're going to do that for the x's and the y's. The y's are a little more straightforward. Let's go ahead and complete that square first. So take 20 seconds and go complete the square on the y's. You're just taking half of 4, which of course is 2. So any questions on the y square completed? It's been a little while since we did complete the square. Do any of you remember how we complete the square when there's a coefficient in front of x squared? Factor it out. So we just get it out of there. There are other ways to do it, but the way I've taught you is factor that coefficient out. So it's really a two-step process, so we factor the 4 out. Now we're going to complete the square inside the parentheses. So this square is really nice, x minus 1 squared minus minus 1 squared. That minus 2 squared cancels the plus 4. So we have this. <coughs> Uh-oh, something's wrong. What's wrong with my y's? be y plus 2 squared. If it's not squared, we don't have a y squared term anywhere. I just forgot to write the squared up there. Now I'm going to distribute the 4 back across. So 1 squared, negative 1 squared is 1, times 4 is 4. It's a negative. So let's get that minus 4 to the other side. Now we need to know what form we're trying to turn it into. So I wrote that form down at the beginning. It's in blue in the upper right corner. So that's our goal up there. So we need to know what we're trying to change this into. So I need my constant on the other side. So add it to the other side. What do I have to do to get it into that form? There's a couple steps. How do I turn both of these fours into ones? Divide by four. So 
multiply by one fourth, we have x minus one squared. Make sure you multiply, there's three terms, they all get multiplied by a fourth. We are almost there. So I rewrote that form so I don't have to keep scrolling back to the top. All right, what, what is A? A is going to be 1. So I, I could write as x minus 1 over 1 squared. How do I rewrite this y plus 2 so it looks like the form I want it in? So it'll be over 2. So I'm bringing that 2 into the, squ the square, or bringing the 4 into the square, so it comes in as a square root. And now I know all the pieces. HK is the center, and that's 1, negative 2. And I printed the cheat sheet out with the all the ellipse stuff. So, oh, I didn't shift it on here, so I'm missing a row. Let's go ahead and graph this out. So if I scroll back up, I don't have the any of these ellipses centered, these ellipses are centered at the origin. These ellipses are not centered at HK. So, do we have a tall ellipse or a wide ellipse? Is A bigger or is B bigger? B is bigger. So we're in the second version right here. So we're going to have a tall ellipse. Uh, let's go ahead and compute what C is. So C is going to be A squared minus B squared, absolute value. Your A is 1 minus <coughs> 2 squared, negative 3. Absolute value is regular 3, and that's not c, that's c squared, so c is square root 3. You're always going with the positives for a, b, and c on our ellipses. All right, our table did not have uh, any uh, shifting in it, so let's again solve an easier problem that has no shifting. So I'm going to write a different ellipse, I'll switch to green again, that's centered at 0, 0. We'll put all the points, the vertices, the foci in, and then we'll shift it. The same ellipse is centered at 0, 0. What changes on the equation of this ellipse? Is that green legible? Yes. I can switch. It's good enough. Okay. What changes in our equation if I want to center this at 0, 0? The A and the B, that's, that's basically the height and the width. That's the stretching. So we don't want to change that. We, yeah, our H and our K is what we want to change. So it's basically everything we're adding, subtracting. So we're going to put, but basically eliminate both of those or um, just not even write them. So we're going to have X over 1 squared plus Y over 2 squared equals 1. So this is a different ellipse, but it has the same exact shape. We're just moving it to the origin. And now I can use that table uh, that I'm not going to scroll back up for. I'm just going to read off the paper in front of me here. We have our B is bigger, so we got a tall ellipse. So our major, it's in your notes too. You can look back at page in your notes. Major vertex. Zero plus minus B. 
minor vertex is plus minus a is zero, and then foci are zero plus minus c. We have a, b, and c. We can easily fill them out. a is one, b is, oh, a is one, b is two, c is square root three. So major vertices, zero plus minus two. Minor is gonna be plus minus one, zero. And then foci is zero plus minus square root three. So square root three, not a very nice number, but it's a little smaller than square root four. So it's a little bit smaller than two. So this ellipse is gonna be kind of small, so I'm gonna use a larger scale when I graph it out. <coughs> So my minor vertices, I'm going to use, each little unit is going to be one half. So I'll go with a one and minus one. That's my minor vertexes. My major are plus minus two on the y axis. And then the foci are on the y axis plus minus square root three. That's going to be close to two, but not quite. Now I'll go with purple for the actual points on the ellipse, and then connect them together. So I got my two foci right there. So any questions about taking this back to the origin and then writing down an easier ellipse, so I can get all the pieces right, and now we're about to shift it around. So let's do horizontal first. What is my horizontal shift? So I go left or right? I'm looking right there. So it looks like a minus one. So it's gonna be shift to the right one. We can also just look HK right here. This says shift to the right one, and then down two. You can just look right at HK. H is a horizontal, K is a vertical. So right one, down two. I'm going to rewrite each of our vertices and minor vertices and foci. All right, how is this point zero plus minus two gonna change when I move it to the right one? What coordinate's gonna change? The X. The X, so what's my new X coordinate? One. one. All right, what about the Y coordinate? The Y coordinate was plus minus two. So, minus two, minus two. so it's gonna be plus or minus two, minus two. So I like to write my plus minus second. So I'm gonna write it as minus two, plus minus two. Uh, there's really two points here, so I'll r write them both out. We have one comma minus two minus two is minus four, and the other one is one comma minus two plus two, which is one zero. So there's two points, the plus two and the minus two in there. Now I want you to rewrite the minor vertex, the two minor vertices. So here's the minor vertex right here. I want you to go right one and down two. So right one, down two. And then write the two points that you get, the plus and the minus point.
So you're just adding one to the X and subtracting two from the Y. And then you get two points out of that. <coughs> Any questions on the two points that come out of there? And last up, foci is going to be very similar to the major vertex. So our foci is going to be 1, comma, negative 2, plus or minus square root 3, which is 1, comma, negative 2, minus square root 3, and 1, comma, negative 2, plus square root 3. So we're ready to graph all four of these out. It's going to look very similar to the graph on the left. It's just going to be shifted. So most of the y-coordinates are negative, so I'm going to draw a bigger negative y-axis. So our major vertices, 1, 0, and 1, negative 4. And then minor vertices, 2, negative 2, and 0, negative 2. And last up, the foci. Now these numbers can be hard to read, this negative 2 plus or minus square root 3. So here is, this is not the foci, but that's negative, uh, that's 1, negative 2. So from this point, I'm going to go up a little bit less than 2 and down a little bit less than 2. So I'm going to go up and down square root 3. So that'll be right about there and there. So that point I drew is the center, and I'm just going up square root 3 and down square root 3. Uh-oh, I totally failed on that. I should be going up 2, which on my graph would be right about there and right about there. Because each unit's 1 half, so I want to go up 2. Almost two. And now just fill in the ellipse. There we go. <clears throat> if you have all the points labeled somewhere else, you don't have to relabel them on the graph. So I can see all the points up above. I don't have to try to squeeze in all their coordinates all over the place on the graph. So there's our analyzed ellipse and then our graph down below. So any questions?